Hey everyone, my name is Sarah Johnson and I'm a pediatric occupational therapist and part of the infant development team at Emerge Pediatric Therapy. I am also a CLC or a certified lactation counselor specializing in infant feeding, including breastfeeding, bottle feeding, and transition to solids. And I am here today to talk to you about tongue and lip ties and how they may, may impact breast and bottle feeding. Tongue and lip ties are something that we are hearing a lot about now. And the reason for this is that we are getting so much better at identifying when a tongue and a lip tie is impacting feeding and also providing treatment options for how to help your infant if a tongue or a lip tie is causing feeding problems. One thing I would love to go over are some of the common signs that your infant might have a tongue and or a lip tie while they're breastfeeding. The first thing we want to look at when we're looking at tongue and lip ties is that there can be symptoms for the baby, but also for the mother. And both of those sets of symptoms are very important when we're looking at the breastfeeding journey as a whole. For an infant, some signs of a tongue and or lip tie might be difficulties with breastfeeding, including long feeding times, over 30 minutes, very frequent feeding, a clicking noise when they're feeding, arching or fussing at the breast, frequently pulling on and off the breast, a shallow latch, reflex, um, among other symptoms. In the mother, commonly what we see with a tongue and or lip tie is discomfort or pain with breastfeeding and damage to the nipples, which may include bruising, sores, or flattening of the nipple after feeding. The important thing to note is that breastfeeding should not be painful for the mother. While sometimes there might be soreness in the first few days of life, breastfeeding should never be painful and the most a mother should feel is a light tugging. If breastfeeding is painful for you or there is damage to your nipples after a feed, it's very important that you speak with a lactation counselor to see what some of the difficulties might be so someone can work with you to address those difficulties. Another thing we frequently talk about with tongue and lip ties is also how bottle feeding is going. Sometimes infants do better on a bottle if they have a tongue or a lip tie, but the most important thing we see with bottle feeding and tongue and or lip ties is a clicking noise. A lot of times parents will note that during feeds and that can be an indicator of a tongue and or lip tie. Another thing we often hear is my baby can stick out their tongue, doesn't that mean they don't have a tie? The important thing to note with ties is a tongue and or lip tie is a functional diagnosis based on deficits. While there is a structural abnormality that comes into play, what we look at when diagnosing a tongue and or lip tie and the severity is the functional impact of the tie on feeding. So if you're working with a practitioner and they are doing a oral motor exam and looking at structures, the important next step for that is also to have a functional feeding evaluation to make sure you're looking at the whole picture. If you have an infant that is demonstrating feeding challenges, I highly recommend reaching out to an occupational therapist or a speech language pathologist who has additional training in breastfeeding. If you have any questions regarding this video today or any concerns with your infant's feeding, please feel free to reach out and we'd be more than happy to answer your questions. Thanks so much.